Okay, I'm the regional product manager for Asia Pacific for Ironman or TC51 and TC56. So today I have actually invited my counterpart John Pamlo, who is the global product manager for TC56, to present to us uh, this uh, product TC56 or rather Ironman uh, webinar. So I'm glad that uh, John has uh, accepted the invite. It's, uh, he's actually based in the U.S. and it's really late timing for him. So I appreciate him uh, extending the help. So John, without further ado, can you take it away? Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Lee Kit. I appreciate the time today to take the time out of your busy schedules, and uh, pleased to uh, announce the TC56 and TC51 product, uh, internally known as Iron Man, as Lee Kit was talking about. Um, and the idea with this platform uh, is that we're bringing together basically two different products in the past. Um, if we go to the next slide. We can take a look at, and we'll see the two platforms coming together, the MC40, which was pretty much inside the four walls product, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, very successful in retail and healthcare as well, um, very good on push to talk and uh, wireless voice technology, and then the outside the four walls uh, with the TC55 um, that came in a couple of different varieties of it. And both were getting refreshed, and the challenge was to pull them both together into a common platform uh, that would make sense. So David Snook is the TC51 product manager, and I'm the TC56 product manager, global product manager. So let's take a look at what these two products combined together start to look like. So let's move to the next slide. So what we did is um, David and myself uh, went out this time last year actually and did the voice of the customer interviews and you know what were the main characteristics that the customer wanted um, that our leading customers um, as well as the customers that went to competition to either smartphones or Honeywell uh, you know the various competition that we have out there and we wanted to talk to both types of customers um, and this is basically the output of that work. So, you know, they wanted a business class tough device. They wanted something that was easy to handle. Um, they wanted a five inch screen, had to be competitively priced. And the Android version um, had to come out, you know, with something that was current, not something that was old. Um, the Android, the, the TC55 is basically stopped at KitKat as far as an operating system. Uh, while the MC40 did go on one more version farther, but that's about as far as it will go. So that was kind of a limiting factor. So they also wanted best-in-class power, uh, you know, how long the battery life was, as well as manageability, as far as telling us how long, you know, what's the useful life of the battery. So, but, um, you know, a couple of things that had to do, it had to get lighter. We, they didn't like the weight of the MC40. They didn't like the thickness, frankly, of the MC40, um, but they wanted a bigger screen the battery that will lasted longer. So why don't we take a look at the next slide. And so this was, these were the key attributes that they asked us to take a look at. Um, sleeker look in design, they wanted more of a consumer feel, uh, much more sophisticated look, a higher resolution screen. The other screens were not quite up to par with the current smartphones. Um, they wanted a larger screen, a five inch screen. We tested a whole bunch of different size screens. We tested a four and a half inch screen the current screens that you see today in the 55 is a 4.3 inch screen. The, we had five inch screens, we had five and a half inch models, we had six inch models, and about 70% of the customers gravitated towards a five inch screen. So that was pretty, pretty obvious which way we should go. Um, we talked about user replaceable battery. We considered a couple of different designs to make it thinner, but at the end of the day, the customers really wanted in the mid-tier product a user replaceable battery. They wanted to make sure we kept the best-in-class Wi-Fi experience that they had, uh, specifically in the MC40. And then the 4G LTE was a big, big, big thing that we needed in the TC55. We just couldn't get there in many of the markets with the 4G LTE product. Um, the, the next thing was basically to push forward. So this, this project probably set one of the records as far as a product being developed because this was literally a PowerPoint slide in January when we all got together in January to put this together in the different disciplines of engineering and um, the different aspects. And uh, Human Factors was working alongside of us to kind of building models as we went. So 
Um, and the senior leadership team originally, they, the plan was to bring it out in January in 2017. The senior leadership team challenged us, the sales team challenged us, can you come out in October um, with a what type of wireless LAN version, which we've done. We've released the wireless LAN version last week and the wide area network cellular version will release in January of uh, 2017. Why don't we take a look at the next slide and we can see kind of the comparisons of what, what we have versus you know, where we're going to. So you can see the MC40 and the TC55 respectively on the left side of your screens. Um, the both with 4.3 inch screens, different form factors. And then if you take a look at the TC56 and 51 next to it, um, comes in with a five inch screen. We've done a couple of different things. It's about the same overall size, frankly, as the TC7X series. Uh, what we've done is we've pushed the glass all the way out to the edges. Um, and to the top and the bottom, and so you can get as much screen as possible and not really grow the device in your hand. Because we're, that was another very important feedback. And thanks to Lee Kit, we spent a lot of time. Uh, we spent some time in Beijing. We spent some time in China, or in Japan, um, in Tokyo, with our customers there. And the feedback was definitely make sure it fits in our hand, make sure it feels light um, as possible. The TC7X series was always feeling a little heavy for everyone. So that was um, basically kind of how we came to that, that particular design. If you, you take a look at the next slide, we can see kind of how it lines up for thickness. The 51 and 56 coming in is significantly less than the 75. It's, a, um, it's flat on the back, unlike the MC40 and unlike the TC55 with the 1.5X 1 1.5X battery, it kind of has a bump. But what's interesting about the 56 is that we were able to put in about the same size battery as you have in a TC55 1.5X without that giant bump out that you had. Um, and so that's now the standard battery, what used to be the 1.5X in the TC55, about the same size as the standard battery in the TC56. Um, and by the way, there is only one size of the battery at the moment, um, and it's a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, but we'll, we'll get into that. But the idea is it's slim, feels good, fits in your pocket nicely, doesn't catch on anything. The lashes used to catch on things on the MC40. TC55 was terrible to pull the battery out. It was pretty tough on your fingers to get that battery cover off without breaking your fingers or the, or the latch, frankly. Um, but you'll find the experience when we take a look at the pictures coming up, how the battery comes off, um, what the experience is like. Let me take a look at the next slide. We can take a look at a couple things that we're doing differently in this one. Um, it's a unibody construction. Um, the IT is IP67 when, in January when the TC56 comes out, we'll be finished with all our testing. Um, right now, if you look in the literature and on the spec sheets, you'll, you'll notice the IP67 conspicuously missing. And that's basically because we're not allowed to print anything on the spec sheet that is not immediately available within 90 days. So, um, and we knew that we weren't going to make the testing in time, so you'll see that the mill spec and the IP67 missing on your, on your spec sheets. But in January, we're doing a refresh, and when, when all the testing is done, um, that'll be on that spec sheet. So but we're on target, and we um, will make that. We take a look at a couple other things coming out. Moving forward as well, um, this will be coming out a little bit probably towards the second quarter. It's this thing called Active Edge. Pretty intriguing idea. The idea of Active Edge is on the side, if you take a look about two-thirds of the way up on either side, you see those white little markouts. And those are programmable side buttons. They're dynamic soft keys. And so you can basically program those particular areas to do anything you want. If you want to, say you do a lot of printing and you want to pull up a printing function, say you want to pull up the telephone. Um, it can do, say you want to enable a scanner button on it. But they're basically um, dynamic. You can make them do whatever you want to do. Um, and then what we did in the chassis, so you don't have to, even though that's a visual cue, if you run your thumb up the side of the of the unit, the TC5 series, you'll feel a little bump out where those white parts are, and you can basically tactical feel and uh, push those buttons. There's a protective boot. Um, we took some lessons out of the TC55 and the MC40. The protective boot increases our drop spec by one foot, so we're now with a drop spec of five feet over concrete with a boot. Um, and then this one is much more rigid than the 55 was. And you'll see why in a, in a little bit. It combinates a hand strap um, and a stylus. Well, why don't we take a look at that? Let's take a look at that next slide. It'll show the hand strap on it. There we go, perfect. 
Um, so the hand strap is on the back side of the ruggedized uh, boot. Basically, you can see the coiled cord for the stylus, um, and a nice elastic, you know, fairly stiff, uh, good feel on the on the hand strap. On the 51, we did something a little different. Um, we don't show it in this picture yet because this was these pictures were done a little early on before we actually did it. But um, at the bottom of it, down at the very same the little red line that says modular I/O, right down just above that, there's a little in cut, there's a little cutout where you can put a strap, kind of wrap it around, kind of like what we call a towel bar is what we call it here, um, and it wraps up and connects to a little hood on the top. That's only on the TC51. The TC56, we chose to use the ruggedized boot because we couldn't put that little cutout in the TC56 because all the cellular antennas are basically in the bottom of the unit, and that would, that would cut right into it. So that's the back. The other thing you'll notice at the top, or as you towards the top, you'll see a gray button there that says Programmable Back Button. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. Um, the back button basically is, is a programmable button, as, we, as, a, as it says there. Um, the idea is that it comes as with default um, initiating the scanner, but you literally can make that do whatever you want. We've had um, customers and folks inside the Zebra and the various sales engineers and salespeople say, hey, can I make that turn on the flashlight, you know, or the torch? So if I'm like in a dark closet or something and I want to turn that on and use it as a flashlight, could I do that? I said, Absolutely. We have other customers that said, hey, you know, I would like to use it like a panic button. And if I push the series of, you know, button pushes, maybe two or three in a row or two shorts and a long, I can set off an, an emergency signal, you know, back in another location. Um, so it's the idea is to really kind of make it, you know, whatever your customer wants to do, but it's the first time we've ever actually done anything like that. Um, here at Zebra. If we take a look at the next slide, we'll see kind of a side view and a straight on view of the unit. And a couple lessons we learned out of the 55. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> the 55, everybody probably remembers, we put the scan button right across from the power button. <laughs> and initially we had problems with it, turning the power off on the TZ55. So we Definitely learned our lesson from that. The two side buttons you see, the left and right scan key, are exactly that. They both do the scanning. Um, you can push both, push one, whatever, but you're not going to turn the unit off. Um, above that, you can see the push to talk key. It's just right above it, and that's on the left side as you're holding the unit in your hand. Um, so we're expecting a lot of voice, especially with the 51, um, primarily set up for retail. On the other side, you can see the rocker panel, the volume up and down. Um, which is pretty much similar to any cell phone. The idea is that it's got a pretty, it's got a nice tactile feel, um, and there's a little, little bump out there. You can feel whether you're hitting the plus or the minus in there, so you can kind of basically do everything without having to see it. Um, you'll see no down the group area. There's no keys, uh, basically because we don't want you to set anything off. We got some feedback from some of the cellular phone companies, like in the Samsung with the curved glass. Uh, we actually looked at a curved glass for this particular model, but it was really expensive, and the other problem was is when you held it, it actually um, activated the screen and turned on some of the applications, and we just found that that was a problem. So scanning takes priority. Uh, secondary priority is the voice with the push to talk, and then the grip area, the, the kind of the top, top areas. So why don't we take a look at the next slide. So the scanning, that's how it gives us a good view at the top and the head of the unit. It comes basically with one flavor of scanner, the 2D4710 scanner. Uh, imager. That's the same one we're using in the 2D version of the TC55. Uh, very robust scanner. It's got a lot of time on it. Very predictable, very easy to manage. Uh, we looked at a bunch of different options for imagers, um, and this one came out on top as far as our testing and customer experience. You'll see the power button at the top has been moved right there. It's indented a little bit, so you can't accidentally turn it off in your pocket. It's, pretty, it's got a pretty good stiff feel to it, so you can't actually push it. On the other side, underneath the rubber boot, is the uh, headset jack. And we went to, well, it's a TC55. It's a standard headset jack, 3.5 millimeter, um, that you find on almost every cell phone except Apple phones. <laughs> uh, we take a look. Why don't we take a look at the next slide, Lee Kit? Here's also another piece of innovation we did on the TC56 and TC51. You'll see that seven-pin connector on the bottom. 
What that does is that enables us to do is USB-C charging. USB-C charging is the new format that you'll see on the, the newer phones. Um, it allows us to charge a lot faster. Um, you'll see in the later slides, we charge in about two and a half hours, two to two and a half hours, depending upon which charger you're using um, from dead stop. So that's about twice as fast as it charges on a TC55, just to kind of give you a feel. The other thing we can do on the bottom with those seven pins, we can now have communications out the bottom. Um, so before at the 55, we only had basically charging on the bottom. So we have a lot more possibilities for sleds, um, for vehicle chargers, communications, um, and we'll, we're looking at putting audio out of USB there in the coming, coming versions of it. The other thing, if you look under there, there's like a secret trap door there, um, and it's on a little lanyard, and you, you pull that off, and what you get, you see is a standard USB-C connector. Um, and the new USB-C, like we said, is, allows us to do faster communications, uh, which the programmers and our developers will appreciate. Also allows us to do faster charging on it as well. Um, and it does, the, basically, it's, there's no kind of upside down on it. It fits, the little plug will fit in either way. The idea we put the USB-C charging in there is the, um, uh, for programming. We really want people to use that rubber, uh, the, you know, the seven pin connector that's basically tied to it um, because we know from experience, from people using USB-C that the, um, you know, those tend to break after a while. So why don't we go to the next slide and we're gonna look at the battery. A Couple things about the battery. The next couple slides we'll take a look at briefly about that with the battery. The, a couple things we learned, like we talked about before. The battery pulls up really nice, um, a nice refinement, similar to what you're experiencing with the TC7X series. Um, basically, you pinch those two together, and um, the battery starts to release itself. Uh, very easy to pull off. If you've ever used a, had a Honeywell CT50 in your hand, um, you'll find that that is a little uh, cumbersome to basically unlatch on the CT50. So we didn't want that experience. Strong feedback from customers um, on the CT on the MC40 and the TC55. So the team did a, a fantastic job on that. Um, as we look at the next slide, a couple of different things we did also for this unit under the, under the battery side. We used uh, Power Precision Plus batteries um, in this. This is the first time we've used this. We've had a couple different versions of this, but this time we went all out with the Power Precision Plus. Gives us much more accurate. Um, end of life prediction on the battery and how useful it is. It also allows you connection back into like Sony or AirWatch to provide that data or OBS uh, basically back to your end user, to your customers uh, to kind of give us a feel for the ages and how they're using dynamically if there's any problems with it. It also provides us a couple things. It tells us what serial number is in the unit. It can tell us if it's a genuine Zebra battery or if it's, um, you know, some other type of battery. Um, aftermarket type battery that is in there, but it'll basically give us give the customer a lot of you know a lot of information around it, um, and the APIs are available you know for importing into the unit. So spent a lot of time with the battery. The next thing is um, we take a look at the next slide, the um, idea of how fast will this thing charge, and so we're doing our initial measurements, and so we did measurements up to 90%, and so on a vehicle cradle um, it'll charge in about two and a half hours. So if you're using either a cigarette lighter adapter, you know, or just a uh, basically a USB type cable and the wall mount or a wall ward kind of thing into your, you know, in your office or something in about two and a half hours up to 90%. Um, it only takes a little bit longer to go up to 100%. We're experimenting um, initially with how fast we can get the charge in there. If you use a toaster, like a lot of our retailers use, um, on the 51, we know it'll charge in two hours or less. Um, so we can get a little more voltage into the toaster option. The other thing that's nice is that for the TC55, we didn't have many charge options. Um, we have now shared cradles, so this will take advantage of the existing shared cradle. It's just a new cup for it. So the um, like the advantage is basically uptime. How fast? How can I charge this? We don't want the unit to be down very long um, and get the unit back in. Um, the other thing that uh, we should mention in here under batteries, I don't believe, I don't know why we didn't put it in here, but it has something that TC55 never had, 
and the MC40 did, but didn't execute too well, was warm swap. So what you can do with the Ironman product, the TC5 series now, is basically there's a little icon on there. It says put this into warm swap, and it starts the shutdown. It suspends basically everything, the radios and the application. but suspends everything. It allows you to pull the battery out, throw the new battery in, and then hit unsuspend, and it fires everything back up, and you can pick up where you left off. So something completely new for the TC55 customers, and hopefully a more elegant solution for the MC40 customers. Why don't we take a look at the, what we do with that rubber boots? Let's take a look at that next slide. So here's a little closer look on what we did with the rubber boot. Um, the, it's, it's pretty firm. And so what you're going to see in the next couple of slides is a couple of different designs. So there's the hand strap on it. It fits on the MC40. A couple of questions is, does it fit on with the charger? Does it fit the charger? Absolutely, it does. Um, it also fits in the vehicle cradle without having to take it off. And the idea is it's, it's very stiff because it's going to hold a gun handle you're going to see in a couple of slides. And the idea is really we're thinking once customers kind of have it on there, you're going to probably pretty much leave it on there because um, it is it is pretty stiff. It can be color-coded in a bunch of different colors. So if your customers want it and they're unique customers' colors, we can certainly do that. Um, the benefit, again, we increase our drop spec, much like the 55 we did, by increasing it by a foot. Um, and so now it drops five feet over concrete, which is a nice nice spec. So it starts to put us into a, a good category there. Let me take a look at that next slide. You can still see the keys are, um, you know, basically, you, you know, everything's exposed. You can push everything through. You can see while the head fits. And so you have access to everything and the I.O. connector. So, again, this, you know, this unit, once you put the boot on it, we anticipate customers will charge them and use them probably most of its life with the boot on it. You can take the battery off, still use the camera, um, you know, so it's fully functional. So it's really, once you kind of have it on there, we don't really anticipate customers taking that off. A couple of things we can do with the boot, if we take a look at this next slide, um, we can we put a gun handle on it. The gun handle is really an interesting design. Um, they went through a bunch of different iterations on it. The mechanical design guys did a great job with this. Um, and what it does is it actually uses that back button that we saw in a couple of slides earlier that um, actually actuates the scanning functionality of it. The rubber boot is pretty stiff. And the reason why it's stiff is so that gun handle basically clips in right into the unit, right into the, into the rubber boot. The use case that we found was customers like, uh, for example, Amazon um, uses a lot of their TC55s, and sometimes they use them for like a, in a warehouse application, and then sometimes they'll, then they'll go and the drivers will go and take that same unit and use it in the, in the vehicle. And the idea was, hey, give me a unit that has a gun handle that doesn't cost a lot, clips onto the bottom so I can use it kind of like a warehouse device. Um, and then when I don't need the gun handle, I can unclip it and use it kind of as a standard, you know, standard field mobility type unit. Um, the, so it's, um, it's, it's a totally mechanical design, so there's no batteries, no charging. You don't have to maintain anything extra like that. Um, the one thing, kind of understand what it is and what it's not. You know, so it's really a hybrid type of device. This is not going to replace a TC8000 or the, the 8000 series gun handle. This is not going to replace, you know, a dedicated warehouse unit. You know, if someone's doing a lot of heavy scanning, this is not that. This is really meant to be kind of a hybrid, hybrid use device um, to kind of solve a couple of different issues at the same time. Lee Kid, I didn't know. I kept talking here. I don't know if there's any questions or if we just want to wait till the end. Um, yeah, I mute all the lines, so the questions will come in through a chat box and FAQs. Once there's questions, I'll let you know. Okay. Very good. We'll check it. We'll, we'll look at it at the end then. Um, the here's the uh, the branding that we can do with it. We've done some examples for Target, uh, DHL. Um, those are some of the DHL colors that we're, we're mocking up, and you can do, do some pretty interesting things with the gun handle. So uh, continue to do that as well, you know, for your customers if they're interested in doing that. We've had a lot of, a lot of interesting use. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the region customers, um, Australia Post, is looking at red ones. 
I think we have some red ones or a red one right now going down to those guys down there. Uh, so some, some interesting things we're seeing. Corios over in Brazil, uh, which is one of Lee Kid's counterparts, is basically doing one. They wanted one in yellow uh, for, their, for their couriers. Why don't we take a look at the chargers in the next slide. So we are using the shared cradle. Uh, you can see the different options. So very familiar, the one we're, we're using today. We made a cup for it. Um, you can use it with the rubber boot on or with the just straight as you see it there. So you can actually see, if you take a look at the slides, the share cradle, the slots three and four, or you know, the ones to the right actually have rubber boots on them. Um, so that just shows you side by side. Some have boots, some don't. Um, and it really doesn't matter how you put it in there. Same thing with the rugged USB cradle. It doesn't really matter if you have the rugged, the rubber boot on it or not. Then you can see the four slot charger, kind of the toaster slot, uh, you know, standalone charger, and then also the five slot cradle with the um, extra slot on the end, you know, for it to charge uh, four batteries as well. We, um, again, using the shared cradle system, one difference for TC55 customers, uh, we tried hard to accommodate folks, you know, the best we could or accommodate the TC55. Uh, the problem with that was that we could not support the rapid charging um, out of the common cradle, which the TC55 uses. Um, it also was a little bit larger, you know, as you can imagine, the, the whole device, the physical device is a little bit larger as well. So we chose to say, well, we'll standardize on the shared cradle. Customers are already using those. Uh, some customers are already using those already. Let's we'll make them yeah, the, the, the cup that goes on there. It's just an accessory. Why don't we take a look? The next slide kind of shows us all the accessories wrapped together, kind of a family portrait. Um, the good thing, some of the lessons, we are learning a few things here in the business unit. Um, learning all the accessories are released. Uh, let me look at this page, make sure if I talk out of school here. Yes, all the charging cradles are released. Um, the hand straps, the boot, the exoskeleton is released. Um, there's also, oh, you know what I didn't mention was there's a screen protector. On the, on the right side, you'll see, you can't really see it too well. But um, the idea is, well, it doesn't necessarily increase your drop spec or anything, but it does give you, it's a glass screen protector that works out very nicely. Um, the covers, it kind of protects your screen, obviously. The other thing we're seeing for customers is that you can brand that. So it goes, so if a customer wanted to brand it, um, you'll know, say, for example, I'll use uh, Sagawa Express. So Sagawa Express, wanted to have their logo and their name and their colors located, you know, branded onto the screen, they could basically buy this very inexpensive um, protective screen over top of it. And then also the zebra part goes away and then you see just the brand name of Sagawa, for example. Uh, the different cables, we mentioned a three and a half millimeter headset jack adapter, a um, couple different, you know, connectors using a standard USB-C connector when you unplug it, you know, unplug this ruggedized connector, there's a Trigger handle is ready. Um, we bought, we got a new fast charging uh, power supply for the wall wart because it had to accept more voltage out of it. We have a new vehicle lighter adapter, again, to accept more and higher voltage. Uh, the vehicle cradle um, is just about ready. If it's not ready correctly, it'll certainly be ready by the time the TC56 is out. Um, so we should have units there as well. So those are the accessories. So the good news is the accessories are out for the most part and available and orderable. Um, and the TC51 right now is orderable. The 56 will be available to order um, in early December. We'll have some special booking waivers we've got to put in place uh, so you can start to place those orders. So if we look at the next slide, it kind of wraps everything up in one slide. What are the top 10 things? You know, what are the, you know, what's, you know, if you had to have one slide, kind of a cheat sheet slide to talk to your customers about, what would it be? First one is, it's the first five-inch screen we've done for Zebras. Um, it's not the first in, in the mid-tier you know, mid Zebras. Um, of course, Honeywell has one as well. But uh, for the mid-tier category for Zebras, it's the first time we've done that. The programmable back, back button, we haven't seen anybody else do that. That's very interesting. And you know, while it's a scanning button, it can do many different things. That's a, another differentiator. The Active Edge Touch Zones, that'll be available later, uh, probably Q2. Um, but are also, you know, a, a new type of thing. Um, number four, w, WAN, LTE globally, um, 
we're working on China lead kit, as you know, better than us, um, you know, make sure that see what we can do to accommodate China specifically. Um, but the rest of the region in APAC, uh, we should be good, especially with our friends in Australia, uh, Singapore, we should be good, Thailand. Um, the, oh, the other thing we didn't mention, number five, this one, this, the new configuration has two gigabytes of RAM and six gig, uh, 16 gigabytes of flash in the basic configuration. The, uh, we're making a high memory SKU version, four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of flash. Um, that, we're just getting those testing now. So those should be available, you know, when the uh, TC56 comes out. So we're just getting to those now. Um, the, uh, let's see, what else we got in here? So that's the first type of thing. Oh, the processor we didn't put in here, but the processor, the hexacore processor, um, it, which basically allows us to process, you know, it's, you know, the current processors are dual core. So we passed, we leapfrogged to quad core. We're now in the hex core. The CT50, for example, is using a quad core processor. So with the, if you look at the clock speed on the CT50, the Honeywell CT50, the clock speed is a little bit faster. I think it's 2.2 gigahertz or about 1.8. Um, but when we measured and chose the chipset that's in the, the CT50, um, literally we want this one is a lot faster because it can process a lot more information in the background. Then you combine that with the 2 and 16 or the 4 and 32 gigabytes of flash, you really have a very powerful, powerful unit in your hand uh, to basically handle all the scanning, the GPS, um, and the multi basically heavy processing applications that we see today. You combine that with the battery, 4,300 milliamp battery that's in the unit, um, which again is about with almost the same size as the heavy duty battery in the TC55 and bigger than what's in the MC40. Um, the unit is a lot slimmer than the MC40 and about the same thickness, frankly, as the TC55 is today. Um, the weight, that also gets asked a lot. The weight is about 250 grams um, for, the, for the unit. Kind of give you a feel for what that is. The CT50 is about three, oh, I gotta have to look it up, but 350. We're about 100 grams lighter and then the Honeywell CT50 and about 100 grams lighter than a TC7X. Um, it's about the same, it's a little lighter than the TC55 with the heavy duty battery on it. Um, so to kind of give you a feel for how, how it feels, you know, what it feels like in your hand. The, I know we're going to have a lot of questions around what countries it's available. There's the PMB that's available. We, I've listed out all the countries and the timings of when they come in because that's always a very important thing to know um, when it's going to be available in your particular part of the region to, you know, give to your customers. Let me take a look at the next slide. And we can take a look at, so why should I care and what are the major differences? And I put one in here for the 55 and the 56. So if you take a look at them side by side, from a pricing standpoint, we're within about $100 on the list price of a TC50. Well, we're expecting to be somewhere around $100 difference. Um, what do I get for the difference? Um, between a 55 and a 56, and why should our customers really care, especially with all the smartphones that are available? The, the, some of the biggest things that we see is that you now do a 5-inch screen versus a 4.3. You now have a hexacore processor versus a dual-core processor. You now have at least, at the very least, twice as much memory. And if you choose the other one, you'll have four times as much memory as the current platforms have. Um, the ambidextrous scan button, you know, 2D right off the bat. No confusing, you know, 200 SKUs like you have with the TC55. Do I want with 1D, 2D? No, just camera. It comes one flavor. It comes with a 2D imager, and that's it. Nice and simple. Um, warm swap. Never had warm swap before in you know, products, and when we've had it, it's always been kind of kludgy, kind of a little clunky. Um, the idea is to make this, the software team has been writing the interface to make it simple and hopefully easy for everyone to use. Hopefully you'll find it that way as well. Uh, 4G LTE. Uh, for the rest of the world, we just didn't, couldn't get that available in the 55 um, across the rest of the world. We had a sort of limited availability in North America, but even there, it was, it was pretty tough. Um, the, we talked about the processing speed. We talked about the flash memory and the, and the warm swap. So those are kind of like a cheat sheet version of what, um, what's coming available. If we take a look at the uh, next slide, the MX slide, um, and this is sort of, should be familiar to a lot of folks. 
and why we keep showing this, the security, manageability, data capture, connectivity, we get kind of so used to seeing this with the stage now and the MBM kits and ODS kind of gets drummed into our heads. But a couple of things are, we're seeing in our competition, for example, I was in a bid working with the team last week on a Panasonic unit, and uh, the sales team asked them, you know, uh, the Panasonic, actually they, I guess I'm actually talking to the Panasonic dealer, you know, what additional software was available for controlling the device or securing it, locking it down beyond what Android had, and they just kind of gave them a blank stare. Um, so don't overlook this. Sometimes we talk about this so much we forget about it, but the ability to control it, about the manageability of it, um, the EMDK from a development standpoint, the stage now, um, and then pairing that with, you know, the likes of Sodi and AirWatch, um, and you add what we talked about before with the Power Precision Plus, um, you know, that really makes it for a very, very strong package. All right, let's take a look at so how we sell this thing. <laughs> what kind of configurations do we have on this thing, and what's the price? How much is this thing going to cost me? So here's the pricing on the 51. Um, you'll see the different configurations. And so the couple of things you want to look for is um, we've tried to simplify the SKUs as much as possible. Uh, so you'll see rest of world, A6, you know, is a suffix on the very end, TC51. Um, there's a uh, couple. There's also regional um, versions of it for language, those types of things as well. So they're all, these are basically clipped right out of the PMB. Um, so basically everything is in there, and if you need it, Lee Kit has it, and I'll be happy to send it to you as well, um, or should have shown up in your email, but I know everybody gets, you know, hammered with email every day. If we take a look at the next slide, one of the things we did with the 51 right out of the bat, we made demo kits, pretty sweet. Um, and in your demo kit, you just order that same, that one, one kit number, you get the, you know, rugged boot, you get with the hand strap, you get a soft holster, uh, you get a trigger handle, um, you get a USB charging cable, um, you know, so it comes all as a, as a demo kit for your region. So it might be a good idea to have a couple of those, you know, floating around amongst the different salespeople um, available. Uh, you might find, might find very useful. Why don't we take a look at the next slide. So the TC56 slide, uh, excuse, I won't go through all this, but basically since you'll have a copy of this presentation, this will be a good reference if you wish. Uh, this basically breaks down all the different SKUs uh, for TC56. Um, you can see the SKU here uh, for China, dash CN, um, and the various, you know, various regions around the world. Um, and then in the DN as well, it will give you the release schedule of when each of these country certifications will be done. Um, a couple, couple of notes around the country certifications. We would love to be able to go around all of them, frankly, <laughs> if we could. Uh, the problem is, is that a lot of the customer, a lot of the countries, you know, there's tariffs and basically have to follow protocol, and they won't allow us to start certification, um, especially early. You've got to have pretty close to a finished device before they'll allow us to put it through certifications. So um, we're doing our best. So we are on target so far for strong release um, in the 56. Um, and uh, you will see um, what I'm doing is I'm putting booking waivers available. We're going to start to ship uh, for the country to MIA pretty much. We'll be able to start taking shipments January 31st. Uh, but what we're doing, we're seeing a rapid ramp. So if you see in that column, plan first book date, uh, we're setting up a booking waiver. So if you see, hey, John, i got a customer. So for example, Lee Kit's got a couple customers right now. That looks like we're going to need to get some units in, at least lined up early. So the first ones to roll off the line will go to, you know, for lucky enough to win the Sagawa bid or the Australia Post bid or the Thailand Post bid. Um, if it looks like, hey, we need to get units as soon as possible, we'll, we'll get the booking waivers um, on there as well. Um, we had a question. I'm going to take one of the questions here. Someone asked me what the swap time um, when you swap into you know, a battery. Uh, so the W lane is not disconnected. The basically, I don't know if they finished the timings, but it's probably within about a minute and a half, about 90 seconds to two minutes uh, to swap out a battery. So you're not going to be letting, you know, let it sit there for five minutes. Otherwise, the unit will shut down. The reason being is, um, honey, is that the 
size of battery you need to put in there. If we made it hot spots, for example, where it kept the radios live, um, you needed a huge battery in there, and it would have made the unit too big and fat, frankly, and heavy. Uh, so you've got about a minute and a half to pull the old battery off. I think you'll find that very easy. You can literally you can do it in probably in about five seconds. Pull the old battery off and clip a new one in. But there's about a minute and a half for you to go and walk down and get the new battery. So that's a little bit around the, the configurations. Um, we'll keep going through those. Are just a couple of matrix. Why don't you flip through those, Lee Kit, if you could, down to the accessories. There we go. This is the same thing. So this starts to show you uh, some of the accessories that are available today already with the pricing. Um, and the release date, they're already released, so they're available. So go ahead and, you know, as you see fit, um, you know, for your demo pools, your personal stock, uh, we want to make sure that they, they are come available to you. That's pretty much it. Uh, the rest of the slides are pretty much around the, the accessories. So um, why don't we take some questions? We had the one question uh, this morning. So what other kinds of questions do we have? Hi, John. Yeah, John. Um, first question is, which country is DHL using this product? <coughs> uh, right now, DHL is not using it. They're testing it. Or they will be testing it, hopefully, here shortly. Uh, most likely, they'll be testing it in Germany. Um, for TC56s, they're just coming out now. As a matter of fact, Lee Kids has just got three of them. We're, we own a couple of batteries as well. Uh, so there are only you know, development units that are available today. So we don't expect units, you know, basically more mature units until the end of December, uh, the beginning of January. Okay, thanks. Uh, the other question is, uh, what's the time frame? Uh, sorry, uh, what is the can we charge a TC fifty one and one battery in the one stock share trailer at the same time? Oh, the battery and the uh, the oh, in this. Yeah, in the cradle, so if we can charge a unit and an extra and a spare battery in it at the same time? Is that the question? Yep. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it doesn't. It only has enough space in the back of that one slot cradle to uh, charge the unit itself. But it does have the That's four right. slot charger, so yes. Good question. Okay. Then the other one is, uh, what is the time frame to swap the discharge battery? Uh, sorry, what's the time frame for the discharge battery to maintain a wireless connection when you're changing the battery? In other words, as you change battery, what is the time you have to change it without uh, turning off the machine? Warm swap. Ah, it's about, it's somewhere, I've, um, I'll have to check the exact timing, but I know we're somewhere around 90 seconds, about a minute and a half. Then it'll okay. stay up. I, I'll, uh, I'll get an exact number. Go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, what's the processor speed? The Corp, let me look that up. It's a, um, give me a second here. 1.7. It's like 1.86. I should know that off the top of my head. I'm looking it up for you. Look at that so many times you think I would make sure I get it right though, I don't want to mis misquote this. Here we are. Uh yeah, it's one point eight, I was right. One point eight gigahertz is the uh refresh rate and it is a hex four hex core, you know, sixty four bit processor. Snapdragon six fifty um you know, processor. All right, okay. Um, would there be a TC56 demo kit? Yes, um, that seems to be, you know, very, very well received, so I'm going to create one of those as well. So stay tuned, and I'll, I'll put one of those out there and make sure that Lee Kit gets the number. Okay. Um, would the, like, uh, the TC55 comes with a rugged charging cable as a kit option in the same box. Uh, will the TC51 and 56 have the same option? We did not, um, that's a good question. We, I wrestled with this, we wrestled with this quite a bit. 
we did not do um, put it in the box, you know, as far as the cost. Now, what I could do is if you wanted to do that, we could certainly make a kit for you, um, like we have in the past. That's pretty easy to do and, and have that kitted, you know, right at the manufacturing point if you wish. Okay. Um, is there a kit part number for the unit plus a power adapter? There is, and it should be in the accessories, um, in the accessories detail. Uh, for the power adapter, yeah, it should be in there, actually. Okay. Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's in that accessory SKU list that you saw. All right. Uh, so that is available, uh, in other words, there's a key part number. Yes. Okay. Um, is, are the accessories cross-compatible cost with the TC55? No. No, they're not. Um, we tried to make them as much as possible, but they're not. <laughs> you cannot use the same rocketized charge cable because the pin-out connection is different and it doesn't carry enough voltage to charge the TC56. We tried, mm, but okay. it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, how many boots, or rather, what's the minimum order quantity for the colored rugged uh, case? Um, I will have to check, but I think it's a thousand units is the minimum order. But I'll double check to see if that's still in place. Okay. Um, just okay, some uh, questions which should be answered before is that uh, there's one question about battery. Is it hot swappable? Is hot swappable? Um, the other question now is. Uh, is that the support kind of a power supply and USB cable? Uh, is, I'm sorry, what was that about the USB cable? Is, is, is the, does the unit come with both the power supply and the USB cable? I guess not, oh, right? Um, um, it has to come, let's see, the USB cable. No, you're going to want to order the power supply separately. It has a separate part number. It should be about $17 US for the for the power supply, and I don't recall exactly what the price of the cable is, but you'll want both part numbers when you order it. Okay. Uh, all right, Vicky, you have questions? Yes, um, John, what's the difference between the basic hand strap and uh, the other hand strap? Uh, primarily, the basic hand strap is only on the TC51. It's not available on the TC56. Um, in the 51, let's see if we got a picture of it here. Thank you for going back. We got a, uh, it, yeah, there it is. Is it basic true that the basic hand stripe would, the basic hand stripe would tie to the the bottom catch for the TC51? That's exactly it, yes. If you take a look at the bottom where it says, I like where the words are, it says basic hand strap, there is a little cutout right there at the bottom and that's where that kind of that strap wraps around and connects to itself again and that was the idea and then if you look at that picture at the top it looks like a little hat basically that comes across it's like half of the exoskeleton that comes on just clips onto the top and that's where that connects to the top there was no place to create a similar cutout frankly at the top of the unit without there wasn't any space for it frankly so you have this cap that goes over top and then it just comes slides around the bottom and Okay. You mentioned something about, not sure whether I heard you wrongly, but I thought I heard you say something about if you charge with the cradle, it doesn't support rapid charging, the fast charging. Did I hear you correctly or? I'm no, 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 it does. It does. No, it, everything charges. It's just a matter of how, how much faster. the. We've noticed that the cradle charges about 30 minutes faster than a USB cable does. So the slowest it'll charge is two and a half hours, and then we can get it charged a little bit faster in a toaster and, a, and in a share cradle. We can get it down to two hours. But that's much faster than what you see out of a TC55 today. It's almost twice as fast. Okay, so you were, I think you were saying that the TC55 doesn't support rapid charging. <clears throat> that's correct. Yes. Okay, got it. And um, why is it that um, when you have those uh, specs that the charging was only from zero to 90 percent, 
and it's not 100% fully charged? Um, primarily, we're doing the testing because we're testing um, the initial engineering test was uh, not the full capacity because uh, we we're basically worried about that was when the Samsung problems were coming out. We we're making sure we weren't overheating the battery, frankly. <laughs> Um, so the initial tests were at 90%, now we're at 100%. Um, so the 100% is only a few minutes longer, frankly. That's what you'll see in the specifications for charging. Not okay. significant difference. So the timing, so that timing of two and a half hours, two hours, that's good for fully charged, right? That's correct. Got it, thank you. Um, this is a quick question. Does, are we using the uh, strap? Uh, for the device, would it cover the camera when we hold it? Um, no, it will not. The, uh, if you can see in the picture in the slide here on the top right hand side, you'll see a little silver type of square with the flash bulb, LED flash bulb above it. That's the actual camera. Yeah. Now it's possible you can stick your hand over it. That's <laughs> got to be careful of that, but no, it's, it's, now what does cover the camera though is if you have the gun handle, if you look at the trigger handle at the bottom there, that does cover the camera because we've been asked about okay. that if we can, so just be aware. All right. Uh, we have one more question. Um, I'll do it for clarification. Um, so give you a second. Sure. Or maybe the question is referring to the fact that for the backup battery, would it maintain the system state or would it just maintain the wireless uh, connection? Uh, just the system do state. A hot swap. Yeah, it's, it is not a hot swap, it's a warm swap. So two different things. Um, a warm swap basically pulls everything into sleep mode. So the, bad, so the, the wireless LAN radio will come offline. It puts everything to sleep, and then you swap the battery out, and then when you fire it up, it fires the radios back up. True hot swap would be to keep everything up and live and live. Theoretically, you could make a telephone call while your battery's off, but that is not this. All right. So ours is a warm swap where the system will power, will put in sleep mode while the battery's being changed, and when you power up again, you'll go back to the original state it was in previously. Yep, correct. All right. I think I saw a question about Android. Is this Android only? And uh, the answer was yes. Um, primarily, this is an Android device. Uh, we've, we've the question has come up around Windows, but frankly, we we have the TC7 X series that'll handle the Windows customers, um, and we just haven't seen much adoption, frankly, in Windows. All right. Okay. Um... So when, uh, so what version of Android will the T TC56 come in? It's Marshmallow. Marshmallow, correct? Marshmallow. Marshmallow. All right. Okay. Uh, one more marshmallow. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing to I'm note, too, is uh, we're going to go to uh, Android N. I don't know what they're going to call it, Nutella or what, something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but we are staged. The processor and the memory and everything is ready to go to N. And the other thing, which is pretty interesting about Zebra, is something that no one, none of the other enterprise customers um, enjoy, is that we're there's six customers that Google is working with, six enterprise manufacturers, or six manufacturers in period in the world that will get advanced copies of N, and Zebra is one of them. So we plan to put N on here as, as soon as we can. Um, one question is, uh, what is the Ethernet trailer bracket? What does it do? Ah, there's a, um, what we did was we used, um, in the one slot cradle, there is an ethernet option and we basically, we slide a little ethernet modem in the back of that and it needs a little bracket to kind of hold it in place so it, everything stays nicely in place. It allowed us to make a, a, a ethernet cradle pretty quickly and inexpensively without going through the development of making a special cradle, we could reuse a lot of what we had already. Otherwise, it would have been, you know better than us, it would have been next summer by the time we got it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, what is the uh, sorry? Uh, what is the run? What is the uh, battery life for the TC fifty six? Uh, right now we're at uh, twelve hours at least, uh, more like fourteen hours. Uh, should be very similar to what you're seeing in the TC fifty five because the battery is almost the same size as the one point five X, and the Qualcomm chipset is much. Uh, the newer chipset is much more efficient than the existing one in the TC55. So uh, we really were trying to go, the goal is to go to 14 hours, but we know we do 12 hours very easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does it come with a GMS and non-GMS version? It sure does, absolutely. And they will both be released at the same time. Yeah, talking about that, John, I noticed some of the country-specific skills like India, China, only have the non-GMS skill. Are we planning to have the GMS skill as well? Uh, not for China, but for India and maybe other countries. Yes. Yeah, we'll make them available. It's probably just the SKUs weren't released um, in time. But yes, we'll have both versions available where they're, where they're allowed, as you say. Okay. Um, so, this seems to be the last question, and I must say that this is probably the most uh, longest FAQ we had for most of the <laughs> webinars we've conducted, <laughs> even compared to CC itself. So, I guess Excellent. there's a huge interest in this product, and yep. we do a fellow of orders for this. Yep. Fortunately, we had you online, John. I won't be able to handle some of these questions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, All right. worries. Uh, no worries. No yeah. worries. I'm glad to help. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, great. Uh, thanks. We are just at the top of the hour, and we are on time for this uh, webinar. So thank you very much for those who have attended and for those who asked questions. Feel feel free to uh, we we'll send out this deck to uh, all the participants. So feel feel free to contact any of us uh, if there's any questions regarding uh, the product or marketing and activities and such. All right. Uh, thanks very much for your time and have a good day. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Have have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.